Welcome to the Essential Course for Men. My name is Cliff Williams. Today we'll be talking about work and people. In Ephesians 5.15 it says, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. What's the Lord's will? How would you line this out? How would you define that? You could say his, his will is the gospel. But it's best expressed in how God interacted with His one and only Son, Jesus. He establishes His values, what He cares about, and how He goes about doing His business his values, and what he wants to accomplish. In his son, you see that he sacrifices him, sending him down to earth to live amongst us, to show him through his lifestyle the Father's will. In addition, you see that Jesus puts down his desire, sets it aside, and begins a lifestyle of service for others, whether it's preaching the gospel or helping people, performing miracles. He was about the service of the Father through the service of others. That Jesus does this as his main profession in life. This is what he's about. And he does it under great suffering and duress. Eventually, he goes to a cross. Why? Because the Father loves His creation. These people you're working with, these people you interact with, He loves you, He loves them. And He sent His Son to save us, but then He left us to continue the work that He had started. It's a lifestyle of love and service, demonstrating our devotion to God the Father and our honoring of Jesus Christ. So how do we do it? It's in these lives of the people that maybe we work with, maybe we go to school with. Some of these people are relatives, acquaintances. Some of you are involved with kids' sports and your kids are involved. Maybe you're involved with sports and you're engaging with these people in the lifestyle of Jesus. It's being wise, knowing the will of the Father, demonstrated in His Son, and replicating that here in your age to those people. That is your primary reason for being there. If you nail this, that whenever you go to work and that you're engaged with people in the community, you know you're primarily about the will of the Father, laying down your life, demonstrating the Christ lifestyle to them, engaging in such a way that you can influence them that they might know Christ and become co-workers with you. In Colossians, it says something very similar. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. What does that mean? Making the most of every opportunity. Many times we go to work and we do our work and it's all about work and we forget about Christ altogether. We get annoyed by people, we're busy, we're trying to accomplish our task, and sometimes we act just like them, running over them in order to get this task done because that becomes most important to us. This is a mistake. We're trying to make the most of these opportunities. Situations are going to arise. People are going to have trouble with wives and with kids. They're going to have accidents in their life. They're going to offend you. They're going to be in circumstances in their life that, that you're going to be available to because you're busy about serving them first. And in that, you have a great opportunity for influencing them. A friend of mine told me a story that happened recently. He's at work. He's doing construction. The guy's being a jerk and really aggressive, you know, the kind of aggressive that would cause a fight. Fortunately, my friend retreated. Now, he retreated 
And one of his co-workers later said to him, why didn't you, why didn't you throw down with him? Why, why, why'd you let him get away with that? My friend said, well, I didn't want to lose my job, and I'm a Christian, and I can't do that. I think it's a great answer, but not good enough. It's the difference between good and better. And there's a better way to approach this. He did great in that, you know, he didn't take offense and get aggressive with this fella. That was excellent. You can't do any better. When he was asked, why didn't you throw down with him? Why didn't you take him out? Why didn't you punch him in the mouth? The better answer would have been, I'm here at this work site. This would be his response. I'm here so that I can encourage and influence you who work with me. And if I'm punching people in the mouth, I can't influence people. Why is this important? Because now he's wondering why in the world. He would expect you to say you didn't want to lose your job. He would expect you to say, I was afraid of him. He might even expect you to say, well, I'm a Christian and we can't hit people. That fits too much into what they would expect you to say. We need to T-bone them. I call it T-boning them. We need to approach it in a way that would be more effective so we can take the next step in sharing the gospel. It says, be wise how we're acting towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. And this is how. When he asks, why didn't you throw down with him? You say, look, I'm here to influence people. I follow Jesus Christ, and this is what he teaches us, and this is why it's important, because heaven and hell are in the balance, and it's more important for me to maintain a good reputation and a good attitude and a good relationship with this man and work with him than it is to, show, to flex my muscles and show, hey, you can't push me around. It's not about being weak. We're, we're Christians, and we can't do anything that would be aggressive. And so we have a higher purpose. We know the will of God. And we're carrying it out. And we're looking for these opportunities. What opportunities? The opportunities to suffer and do it sweetly and use those opportunities instead of it pushing us back. It actually gives us an opportunity to move in and take ground for the kingdom. I have my own example. I worked with my brother. My brother is younger than me, and he was my boss. At that point in my life, I already had my degree, and I had been in the Air Force, and uh, I had worked as an engineer. And I was going to work with him at a well drilling company, more manual labor. And the thing was, I wasn't good at that profession. I was new, and I needed to learn some things. But from my little brother, from a guy who, you know, by many conceivable ways in our culture is, quote-unquote, less than me, well, it was a struggle. Not because I thought I was better than him, because I didn't. I saw what he did, and I really appreciated it. We were both Christians. And I knew that I could not throw a fit if I felt I was being mistreated, I couldn't quit the job because of our influence. How was I going to influence these men that I worked with if me and my brother, who professed Christ, couldn't get along? And I was a coward and quit because I was just being wimpy. I was being a baby. You know, we need to see these difficulties as opportunities and learn how to take advantage of those. We're trying to figure out how to make the most of every opportunity. How to influence them. You can't get caught up in the reindeer games. Jeff said this, John's does this, uh, Ed's lazy, whatever. And get caught up in all that stuff at work. Oh, that supplier never gets us our stuff. Everybody's stupid. Nobody pays. No. The boss is a jerk. We're actually looking for those to be opportunities to be sweet and make solutions bring answers, bring peace, bring the gospel. Thank you for listening to this Essential Course for Men. And this one was about people and work. 
do your homework. That means write me a paragraph. That means do a video presentation of this, this what we talked about. Keep it in context. Don't write about something else. Write about this. Talk about this. And share a story where either you were successful or failed in these work situations where you were supposed to be an influence and how you were an influence or how you failed to be an influence and what you see that you need to do better. So I'm signing off. Jesus to the people.